Welcome to the Helios 11 Solar Yacht prototype. Currently I'm sailing through the canals of Germany. It's sunny. There's a bit of shading from a bridge, but otherwise we're actually generating more power than we're using. Going now at 4.8 knots economy cruise mode. We're still kind of trapped in winter, so the energy is very low and the yacht still needs to be optimized. And today I want to go through some numbers of the real speed. So next I'm gonna show you a real test where I go through different speeds at different wattages of engine power and that's gonna generate also a speed estimate when we upgrade the engine of the Helios 11. This one is not the most optimal engine, it's designed for roughly 6 to 7 knot speed and we will go much faster than that. Let's do some science. We're gonna test a number of different power outputs of the engine and create a speed and a power curve. We start with 1450, 5 knots. 1030 watts is 4.4 knots. Now at 520, uh, 530 watts, we're doing 3.1 knots. The lowest speed of 2.5 knots is at 350 watts. Now we're gonna try the maximum speed and some higher numbers as well. Now we're sitting at roughly 3000 watts, we're going 5.8 knots. Let's rev it up to 4000. 4250 and we're doing 6.5 knots in slight headwind. And finally, let's go up to 6,000 watts, the maximum output of the engine. Very good, we're getting 7.3 knots in slight headwind. Those are some pretty good numbers, and here's the graph of the estimated speed we could get if we upgrade the engine to the next version, a 12 kilowatt of the same line. The 12 kilowatt e-propulsion is actually more than double the efficiency of this 6 kilowatt I have currently installed. The current engine I have back there is not optimized for so high speeds and that's why I believe that these high numbers in this estimated graph are very reasonable. The maximum speed I got from the Helios 11 in its current shape was 8.3 knots. At that time I was alone, I didn't have as much water, food and the additional solar panels on board. And to be realistic here, the top speed of a solar yacht is quite irrelevant. The real speed is the one you'll be able to travel for 10 to 20 hours straight to reach very long distances. So if I wanted to go on a single one day long cruise on the Helios 11, let's say for 15 hours straight, and I start with 100% battery. We assume that there's some sunlight, maybe a bit of wind, then I would have roughly 30 kilowatts of power usable. That would mean a steady pace of two kilowatts of power, which leaves us with these numbers. So even in this starting phase, when the Helios 11 is not yet optimized, the performance is quite remarkable. It's perfect for my way of travel and living, going long ranges to different countries, different cities, then sitting in harbor, sitting on an island somewhere, working and doing things for a couple days, and then the batteries will be more than full. In just a single sunny day, of course not in winter, my batteries will go from 0% to 100. So I'm very satisfied with the performance of the Helios 11 so far. And this makes me more excited to develop the next version, the Halo 13. This will be a monolithic twin hull, mixing the best features of a catamaran as well as a mono hull. Based on this data and my personal experience sailing the Helios 11, we can make some estimates, some intuitive estimates of the performance, the cruise speed, the maximum speed of the Halo 13, as well as the Helios 15 model that I might build in one or two years. Starting with the Helios 15, 
the hull speed is 9.4 knots. So that would pretty much be the cruise speed, 9 to 7 knots. And then the maximum speed would easily rise up to a planing speed of 12 to 15 knots, slightly depending on how large of an engine we want to put on the boat. With the Soul React, it doesn't make so much sense to put on the largest engine because in the end you will only drive at the cruise speed or the high cruise speed when traveling only for like showing off for let's say five hour trips you can drive at full throttle so to determine the maximum viable size of the engine we need to look at the battery capacity as well as the expected solar input the solar input of a yacht that is optimized to have a huge area of panels is really significant even if you travel at full speed just intuitively speaking here, I would equip the Helios 15 with a 30 to 40 kilowatt engine. With that engine at full throttle, we could drive for three to four hours if we have a bit of sunlight. And to be honest, if I design the boat for only practical purposes, even for survival purposes, I would just put 15 kilowatts on top of it. Rising up to a planing speed with the Solar Explorer is very impressive and that's definitely gonna pay off when I get these epic drone shots and um, it's gonna be fun as well to have that option of traveling really fast for a couple hours, three, four hours, expending all of the batteries and then just waiting for a day, reaching full charge again. Finally, for the Helios 15, let's take a look at the speed estimate across different wattages. What we can see here is that the monohull is extremely efficient at low to mid speeds. But when we reach closer to the hull speed, the efficiency drops off rapidly. However, since the hull is so narrow and light, we don't see this steep increase in resistance. And we can actually go for higher speeds on the Helios 15. By the way, it's kind of funny that I still haven't had time to finish the Helios 11 and I'm sailing every day in a hurry to get further to the south but still I'm already talking about the next designs I have in mind and I think that's the way to go, you need to be in the present as well as in the future at the same time. I can almost imagine myself currently in the Halo 13 or the Helios 15, excellent seaworthiness and as well being faster than most sailing boats of that size class. We're making upgrades on the current prototype as we go and the next one in line will be interior finishing. It's very important to make a positive high energy vibe inside of your boat. You're gonna feel much better. Moving on, how big should the engine be for the Halo 13 monolithic twin hull? I believe a 40 to 50 kilowatt engine would result in very impressive top speeds. And since we have a twin hull, it scales better with higher performance, with higher engine output. And it might be worth it then to have this large engine of 40 to 50 kilowatts, even though a 20, 25 kilowatt would be almost more than enough. The reason again, I would put a huge engine on the Halo 13 would be to reach very high top speeds and make cool content. And that would increase the exposure of this design, these concepts I want to share to everybody who understands the viability and almost the supremacy of solar lightweight designs. I'm gonna make that happen. So to sum up what I believe is the core of the monohull versus twin hull question, the monohull is better if you want to go for extreme efficiency at low speeds. If you want to cruise into Nordic climates in winter time, that's the one you should build. Otherwise, I think the twin hull is always better. But of course, it comes at a higher cost and requires some more planning to build. A mono hull, I could literally start building by hand with zero plans. And that's almost what I did with the Helios 11. But now because I have the plans within my mind, in my intuition, I could just start building one. Now I'm gonna go back to driving the boat and I hope I can replace this plywood steering wheel as fast as possible. I hand built the entire steering system because I simply couldn't find a normal steering wheel with a long enough cable to reach all the way back to the boat. The cabin of the Helios 11 is quite far in the front to allow more space for solar panels. That's the reason I put it so far in the front. It's a bit bumpy sometimes in waves 
but it's worth the extra power. I'm glad you enjoyed watching this video so far. Stay tuned to the development of Solar Super Yacht by subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video. Now I have a lock to pass.